Okay, well, it is a big day for the Fed, for Geithner, and my next guest knows several of the players involved. He's worked as a research director at the New York Fed and also served as a member of the Fed's rate-setting open market committee and also the Board of Governors. He's Rick Mishkin, now a professor of economics at Columbia University, joining me live from his uh, home just north of uh, the Big Apple. Rick, uh, great to have you back on the program again. Great to be here. And I know that you've probably, like all of us, been watching all of this news on Geithner, on Bernanke. Uh, what has gone through your mind? Well, I, I think it's, it's remarkable. In all my years of studying the Federal Reserve uh, and looking at past history of the Federal Reserve, uh, it's extraordinary uh, how uh, strong the attacks on the Federal Reserve uh, are in terms of its independence, in terms of uh, weakening its authority. Uh, this is really an absolutely incredible period. Uh, clearly, we've gone through an amazing set of events and a disastrous set of events in terms of this financial crisis, mm -hmm. and the public is really angry. And uh, it's playing out in terms of attacks on both the chairman in terms of this, uh, his reappointment, right. but probably even more importantly, since the chairman is very likely to get reappointed, are the attacks on uh, the Fed's independence uh, in terms of uh, being able to second guess its decisions, uh, taking it out of the, uh, uh, bank regulation. These are very, very big deal issues. Right, and, and I'm going to tackle uh, Bernanke and uh, sort of the second guessing that we're seeing of the uh, the governors uh, in, a in a little bit. But I want to talk to you about Geithner, whose picture we just showed you, sure. uh, having been at the New York Fed, of course. Uh, you know, it seems as if that a lot of his argument for why he bailed at AIG is falling on deaf ears. Why do you think this is? Well, I think there are two issues here, which is one is the bailout of AIG, and the second issue is how, it's, how it was done, uh, and in terms of some of the kind of payments that were made. And I think that there's two separate issues. First of all, in general, bailouts are never going to be popular uh, for very good reasons, uh, that they're very undesirable, you don't uh, want to do them lightly, uh, that they set a precedent that means that, that institutions are considered too big to fail, uh, and that leads to really huge, huge problems. And furthermore, you end up bailing out people who really caused the problem. Uh, right. AIG, I think, was one of the key events, not actually given enough emphasis how important it was to the severity of this crisis. Lehman was the trigger, but AIG, right. I think, indicated how bad it really was out there. And, uh, and uh, uh, people are furious about it, and I think rightfully so. And, and that, I, that I can understand. And, and as you said, I mean, they're never going to be popular, so nobody is ever going to want to use taxpayer dollars to bail out companies. But uh, the New York Fed is not helping itself out, right? I mean, uh, you know, disclosing, not disclosing. Geithner is not really helping his case either, uh, because it seems as if that there's not a lot of straightforwardness coming out right now from the New York Fed or from Geithner, no? Well, I, th I think there's an issue that, uh, uh, that uh, they do need to explain why they did what they did. Uh, I actually think that the bailout of AIG had to be done, even though, uh, as the Chairman Bernanke said, there's nothing that got him angrier uh, in this whole episode, uh, because the system was uh, at the point of being, be getting ready to unravel, because the AIG event was so surprising. I mean, he, nobody talked about insurance companies okay. as potentially being the trigger for systemic crisis. Okay. But there are issues about how it was done, and how, I think right. that's something that the Federal Reserve uh, Bank of New York needs to deal with directly. How it was done, and I want to read you a quote uh, from actually Tim Geithner's successor, William Dudley, and I want you to listen in on this, Rick. Uh, from the moment the U.S. government made it clear that its goal was to prevent AIG's bankruptcy in order to stem a broader collapse of the financial system, this undercut the ability to obtain concessions from AIG's counterparties over these derivative deals. That is the heart of the matter, right? That is exactly what people are, that is what they're upset about. It's not so much, you know, should we or should we not have bailed out AIG? It's why did you do it the way you did it? Well, I think there were actually both. I think there is anger at just the bailouts, uh, and I think that's playing out in a very populist way right now. But I think among more, you know, among the financial uh, industry, there are serious questions about whether this was done in the best way possible that protected the taxpayer to the extent that it should have. And it certainly is true that in a situation like this, that that the government is much more limited. It's much easier if you can say to a firm. Uh, you know, we can let you go broke. It's much, much easier because it gives you much more power to to to, uh, to get concessions. Right. So there's no question about that, but it's always a question okay. about where does the power lie.